Okay, my number one problem with caramel cake is that it's usually way too sweet. So when developing today's recipe, I made sure it was rich, decadent, and packed with caramel flavor without being overly sweet. This caramel cake recipe is made up of super soft vanilla brown sugar cake layers with a deep, rich caramel frosting. It is so, so good. So to start off, you wanna preheat your oven to 160C or 320F with the fan turned on, also known as convection mode, and grease or line the bottom and sides of two eight inch cake tins. As always, I'm using my homemade cake release to grease my tins. It works so good and saves so much time. Okay, now once that's done, you just wanna set your cake tins aside and next we're going to sift together our dry ingredients. So I've got 250 grams or two cups of plain all-purpose flour, 30 grams or a quarter cup of cornstarch, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. And then using a whisk or fork, you just wanna mix that all together until it's well combined. Okay, now you just wanna set that aside and next in a large bowl, add in 170 grams or three quarters of a cup of room temperature unsalted butter, 55 grams or a quarter cup of unflavored vegetable oil, I use canola oil, 200 grams or one cup of white granulated sugar and 100 grams or half a cup of soft light brown sugar. And then using a hand or stand mixer on a medium high speed, cream that together for two minutes until it's lighter in color. Now once that's done, just give your bowl a little scrape down and next you wanna add in three large room temperature eggs one at a time on a low speed, mixing well in between each egg. So about 15 seconds of mixing in between each egg. Now once that's done, you wanna add in 120 grams or half a cup of room temperature sour cream and one tablespoon of vanilla. And again, mix until well combined. Now you just wanna get all of that batter off of the attachments because we're going to be doing the rest of the mixing by hand. So next you wanna add in half of your pre-mixed dry ingredients from earlier and gently fold that in with the spatula until just combined. Next add in 120 grams or half a cup of room temperature milk and again fold that in until it's just combined. Then you wanna finish off by adding in the remaining dry ingredients and again fold until it's just combined. You don't wanna overmix the batter so only mix until you can't see any more streaks of flour and the batter is uniform. Okay, so that is our batter all done and now you just wanna evenly distribute it into our two pre-prepared cake tins. Once that's done, level out the tops. I like to give my cake tins a little shake to help with this and then drop your cake tins lightly on the counter to remove any large air bubbles and now these are going to go into the oven for 28 to 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cakes are out of the oven now. They've been cooling in the cake tins for about 20 minutes. And now I'm just running a thin knife around the edges to release the cakes from the cake tins and turning them out onto a wire rack to completely cool. These cake layers are so, so incredibly soft and the brown sugar adds a wonderful hint of caramel flavor to the cakes. Now, while these cakes are cooling, we're gonna go ahead and make our super, super delicious caramel frosting. This is a Southern style caramel frosting, which does take a little bit of time to make, but trust me, the extra effort is so, so worth it. It's going to give you the most delicious deep caramel frosting. So place a large saucepan over a medium heat and add in 170 grams or three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter, 300 grams or one and a half cups of white granulated sugar, 510 grams or two cups of evaporated milk. In the US, that'll be one and a half 12 ounce cans and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now you just wanna let that all melt together and bring it to a simmer. And then once it's simmering, you wanna turn the heat down slightly to a low to medium heat and let this reduce down for about an hour to an hour and a half until it becomes a pretty thick consistency and turns a golden brown color. Now you don't need to be standing over it and stirring it consistently, but you do wanna be keeping an eye on it and giving it a stir every few minutes or so just to make sure it's not burning, particularly towards the end when it starts to thicken up because it's more prone to burning at that point. So once it's thick like this and has a beautiful golden color, you just wanna finish off by adding an 80 grams or a third cup of room temperature whipping cream and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. And then just mix that in until it's nice and smooth. 
Now, once that's done, you just want to transfer the caramel to a heat proof bowl and allow it to cool for about 25 minutes to thicken up a bit before frosting the cake. You still want it to be slightly warm, otherwise if it firms up too much, it'll be too hard to spread. So my cakes are cooled down now, the caramel has thickened up a bit so we can start decorating. Now to start off, I'm going to level the tops of my cake layers so that they're nice and flat and easier to stack. This also just helps ensure that, you know, too much caramel doesn't kind of flow down the sides of your cake. Once the cakes are leveled, I'm going to place my first cake layer on top of my cake stand and spread out a generous amount of the caramel frosting with my offset spatula. Now remember, you want the frosting to be slightly runny still because as you spread it out, it will thicken up and set up quite quickly. If the frosting is too thick on the other hand, then you can heat it up a little and this should just help to loosen it up a bit. Next, I'm placing my second cake layer on top and again spreading out a generous amount of the caramel on the tops and sides of the cake. I'm just using my offset spatula to spread out the caramel and I'm going for a kind of rustic look. Okay, now you can go ahead and decorate this cake however you like, but I'm just gonna leave mine just like that. And that is my caramel cake all done. This caramel cake is honestly the best caramel cake I've ever had. The cake layers are so super soft and that caramel just has such a deep, rich flavor without being overly sweet. Mmm, that caramel is just out of this world. It's so, so good. It has such a well-rounded caramel flavor and it's so deep and decadent. It's just so, so good. And the best part is the caramel frosting isn't sickly sweet. I tried a few different types of caramel frostings and this one was by far the best. So that is it for today, guys. If you do decide to give this amazing caramel cake a go, then please do leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content out and I absolutely love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.